Hello, in this video, I'm showing you how you go about getting your boiler back up and running again if it's showing the F75 fault. The F75 fault covers most of the glow on boilers and also the valent boilers. Some of the glow on boilers will also come up with F9. To get the boiler back up and running again is the same procedure for all of them. So hopefully this video will help you no matter which boiler you have. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I'll go through what causes this fault, how I go about fixing this fault and the possible damage you may be doing to your boiler if you don't get this fault sorted out. Right, now let's quickly whiz through my intro, then get back on with showing you how to get rid of this F75 fault. My name is Mark Ballard, and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up, and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe, and if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here we are then, this is the F75 fault and this fault is on the Glowworm Energy C30. On some of the Glowworm boilers, this fault will also be written as the F9 fault, but fixing the faults has exactly the same process. The F75 fault can be found on the Glowworm boilers and also the Valiant boiler range. If you do have a Valiant boiler showing the F75 fault, of course I've made videos for those. And you'll find a link in the description below. The first thing we can try doing is to reset the boiler. Now to do that, we need to press and hold the power button. So we push that button in, we hold it for five seconds, and then you'll see that symbol come up on display. That will then reset the boiler. Now, if you're lucky, then your boiler might start working again, but obviously this boiler is just gonna go for its startup process now. And what it's doing is it's running the pump and it's looking for a pressure change. So it's looking to see that display on the front there change. If those numbers don't change when the boiler is trying to start up, then the F75 fault will just return again. Now, there could be several reasons for this. One, the pump could be not running. So if the pump is faulty and it's not running, then of course the pressure is not going to change in the system. And so it will then come up with the F75 fault. It could also be that you have no water in your system. So the pressure has dropped enough that it can no longer be pumped around the boiler. And of course, that will also give you that F75 fault. You may be thinking, but my pressure gauge says 1.5 bar, so I've got enough pressure. But what regularly happens is the pressure sensor, that's a little device that measures this pressure, has become faulty and it's no longer reading the correct pressure. So in fact, your gauge should be reading zero. Now this little pressure sensor is 95% of the time the problem when you get the F75 fault. Now the boiler you can see is still going through its startup process. The pump is trying to run and it's trying to pump that water around the boiler and the boiler is still looking to see that pressure sensor change from 1.5 to maybe 1.6, 1.7 or 1.8. But of course it's not changing at all. So pretty shortly the boiler is going to come up and say F75. And there we go, F75. So we're right back to where we started before. Now there is something else we can try doing before we go calling an engineer. Let's just have a quick look at the book and see what that says the F75 fault is. And that says fault, pressure sensor and pressure switch defective. Just a quick note, if your boiler says eco in a display, then the boiler may not go through the startup process when you reset it. So you may need to turn a hot tap on or run your central heating to see if that F75 fault is gonna come back again. Just a little more information about the eco. If you don't have eco in the display, you may have noticed your boiler fires up every so often all through the day and night, even though you're not using it. With the eco setting turned on, your boiler will no longer do that, saving you gas and energy and wear on your boiler. It will take a little bit longer for the hot water to come out of the hot tap because the boiler is then no longer preheated. If you want to know how you can stop your boiler from preheating and turn that eco setting on in the display, of course, I've made a video showing you how to do that. And I've left the link in the description below. So to get your boiler working again, what we can try doing is increasing the pressure in the boiler. To do this, we need to go underneath the boiler and we need to open the two valves which top up the boiler. That's this valve and this valve here. 
Now you may have an external filling loop like this and you can also use that to top up your boiler by opening the valves on it. First of all, I'm gonna reset the boiler so I can see exactly how much pressure is in the boiler. So I'm gonna press and I'm gonna hold the power button for five seconds, three, four, five, and there we go, that symbol's come up and now the boiler's reset. And now I'm gonna go back underneath the boiler and I'm gonna open these two valves. Now I always open this valve here first because this one can be tricky to get to and hard to turn. So I always turn that one first. Now that one there is open like that. So I'm now gonna open the other valve on the other side, this one here, turn that one. You should hear some noise now as water goes into the boiler and starts topping up your boiler and increasing the pressure. Now I'm gonna take this pressure up to 1.7. If your boiler doesn't start working after this, you could try increasing the pressure a little more, maybe up to two or just over two, but you certainly don't wanna go much farther than two with your pressure. And hopefully your boiler will then start working again. And now I'm gonna close both these valves. So I'll close that one. And now I'm gonna close the other one. So do make sure you close these valves. If you don't, you're gonna to continue topping up your boiler and that's gonna give you more problems and we don't want more problems. So I know on this boiler, it did get the boiler working again. So what I'm gonna do now is just push a button on the front of the display just to light it up so you can see what happens. Now I'm gonna turn a hot tap on and then you'll see the hot tap symbol will start flashing. And then we'll see the flame come on and then yeah, that's it, our boiler is working again. Now, hopefully if you've done this, it has got your boiler back up and running again. But just bear in mind, it's not necessarily fixing the fault because the pressure sensor is still getting sticky and it may get worse. And obviously it's probably not reading the correct pressure either. And this pressure sensor is a safety device for your boiler. And if it's not working correctly, then it may give you more problems. And like I said, we don't want more problems. And there is the possibility that it might even damage your boiler. And I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by that now. So I'm now gonna go underneath the boiler and I'm gonna open this valve up here and that's gonna let all the water out of the boiler and it'll drop the pressure right down to zero. So I've got my water vacuum, I'm gonna put it underneath the boiler, open this valve up, then you'll see all the water come out of the boiler. There you go. So we got all the water is now coming out of the boiler. You'll see in just a sec, all the water has stopped coming out. Now there will still be some water in the boiler, but that water will be under zero pressure. So our gauge should read zero. I'm now just gonna close that valve so we haven't got water continuously dripping out of the boiler. And then we're gonna go back to the display and see what that says. Well, you can see now that the pressure has dropped a bit down to 1.4, but that should be reading zero now, warning us that there's no water in our boiler. But it's not doing that, it's showing that we still have pressure and water in the boiler at 1.4 bar. And that is obviously completely incorrect. Now the problem or danger with that is that now if you turn your hot tap on, the boiler still thinks it has water in it. So it's gonna fire up and try and heat up the boiler. But obviously with no water in it, there's a possibility you're gonna overheat your boiler or damage something. So we don't really wanna be running our boiler with no water in it. So if you are getting this problem, then it is really worth calling a gas registered engineer just to come and change that pressure sensor. It's quite a simple job, it doesn't take long to do, and it'll keep the boiler running safely. Now the boiler will have a little bit of residue water still inside it, so I'm gonna turn a tap on and see if it's actually gonna run. And yes it is, you can see the tap is flashing and the flame is on. And the pressure's not really changing, and the boiler to my ears making some really horrible gurgly sounds which other engineers will recognize of air being pumped around the boiler. Now obviously this is incredibly bad for your boiler. So if you are getting this fault, like I said, get it sorted out sooner rather than later by a gas registered engineer. So on this boiler, I'm changing the pressure sensor and this is the electronic pressure sensor. You can see it's got a little hole there and that's where the water goes in. The water then pushes against a little diaphragm inside the sensor. That's then sensed by the electronics inside it and it's then plugged into the circuit board on the boiler. If you wanna watch my video on how I go about replacing this pressure sensor, then I've left a link in the description below. Now I've replaced the pressure sensor and you can see straight away the display is showing zero. So the boiler will not operate until we raise the pressure inside the boiler. And that's the old pressure sensor there. 
So now I'm going to go to the two valves underneath the boiler and I'm going to raise the pressure up to around about 1 to 1.5 bar. The pump will start running whilst I'm doing this and that will fluctuate the pressure a little. And there we go, we can see the pressure is now going up. When it gets to the 1.5 bar, I'll shut both the valves. And there we go, that's it. So this boiler has now had the pressure sensor replaced. You can see when I run the tap now, the pressure rises by half a bar. So that indicates to me that the pump is working well and the pressure sensor is working well. I'll just quickly run the heating to make sure that's all good. Of course it is. And there we go. And this customer is now good to go. Knowing that the boiler is now running safely and correctly again. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.